Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks. Normally this would have been a regular uploaded video, but unfortunately my camera is having some issues with recording it and keeping it all as one seamless clip. So I'm just recording it as a live stream and it'll just be uploaded regularly in the channel. If you do join in the live chat, thank you, I appreciate it, but it's not necessary. If you missed it, no problem, it's still available to watch. So this is a haul from Andy's Brick Shop, which is located in Pennsylvania. Uh, here's a little bit of information about it with all different kinds of minifigures, sets, Lego products galore, all different ages of them. And there's really some fun things every time I go there. I personally recommend it if you're in that area because I've went there several times and I always find something interesting every time I go. So for this time, I actually found some really good stuff that I separate into some categories. They're all minifigure based and they're all for different purposes that I have going down the road. Possibly to change here and there for some of them, but for right now, um, some really good ideas going for it. And also to keep things in mind, I did actually use some store credit that I had saved up and traded. There's actually another card of this and somewhere over here. Anyways, the, the point being, I have, I have trade credit that I've saved up for a while and I used all of that or almost all of that for this particular minifig haul and some to remain for later. So let's get right to it. We got uh, all different kinds of things in here. I'm gonna start things off with some random minifigures that I just happened to find there and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take those home because those are fun. And these are ones that I had kind of had my eye on for a while, but wasn't like I'm going in here specifically for this. The things I was going in for the shop, unfortunately already sold. And I'm, you know, just kind of whittling down from, from that of what else I was interested in. So the first two things here, green future on Spaceman, which I did not already have. I think it's the last color that I needed out of the future on minifigures because I already have one of each of the other ones. I do have the future on monorail set, but I don't have multiples of the figs to go with that yet, but that'll be for some time later. And we have this truck hat figure from Jack Stone, or AKA Four Plus Juniors back in the day. So you might've already seen a recent Brickstar video where he talks about a garbage truck and there's a minifigure included with it that has brick written on the hat. Well, this one has truck written on the hat and he's featured in two different sets. He is not exactly the same figure, but you have the right idea there. Here we go. I can see, I can see him much more clearly. I actually think it'd be funny if I created a sig fig in every figure form like if there's one for jack stone one for friends i did a friends mini doll one uh several years ago and i need to bring that back that would be fun to bring on the channel um but it would be fun to try one for every single figure form belleville is probably going to be one of the harder ones scala i don't remember how many parts there are for that and i definitely don't have any of those parts but i don't know i'll talk about that more later but the future on figure is very cool this is more of a updated version a more Recent version, they did not have an original green future on because this was from Lego City. This was from one of the town square kind of sets that featured a Lego store. And this figure was not really as a walk around guy in a costume sort of thing. He was just a standee that would be in the store window. But I'm going to use him towards the future on uh, monorail and other sets. I think I have one or two other future on sets that could also work with him. So and I definitely have all the other color figures. So that'll be cool too. Next up, while we're talking about sig figs, I found a couple of parts that would be useful for not only my sig fig, but also a couple other ones. So I do, every time I find a seller that has used, you know, older Lego parts, especially minifig parts, I always look if they have leather jacket torsos, because I could always use more of those. I do still have plenty of them available for trades, but I could always use some more for the future, especially when it comes to meetups and conventions and whatnot. So the first one we have here, it's kind of a mishmash of parts. Still looks very cool for what he is, but I am definitely using this one for the torso itself. And of course, all the stickers on these figures, easy to come off. They do not damage the figures. I've used these before, or at least I've had figures from Andy's Brick Shop before that use these, so no problem on there, even though the stickers are right in the way of things, but it's all good. This next one from Harry Potter, I don't already have, and I actually want to use the torso for my sig fig in more casual wear. I kind of more realistic, what would I actually wear in real life kind of thing. Now I wouldn't have the short shorts with it, of course, but I do have a blue jacket like that. I've, I've worn for many, many years. Um, so I think that would be very appropriate. And the good thing about that one 
it can be used with any skin tone figures. So I could swap it around for, you know, what my actual sig fig is like, or I could use it for like a skin tone version because I might introduce that like a year or two ago, um, having a particular face to it, but still, you know, easy to adjust the parts, you know, customize it a bit. Brett Spilds, welcome to the stream. So I picked up Bruce Banner, not for Bruce Banner, but he's cool. He's, that, he's all right to have here. And mostly I picked him up because I wanted the torso out of him, which I don't think is available in any other sets. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so I thought this would be a good one to use either for my figure, maybe for a little more uh, formal wear, but also could be used for other figures I have in mind, whether or not actual sig figs and um, just cool parts to have in general. And I also do like the hair piece. I don't think I have that one in black. I have, I have a lot of them in blonde because of Lloyd from uh, Ninjago and a few of them reddish brown from Anakin in Star Wars. I don't think I have that. I don't remember if I have one in black for uh, for anybody. And the next figure here is used for a sig fig, but this one's actually not my sig fig, but Hoke Bricks from Instagram and YouTube. You might recognize the face, Eric, and I. Yeah, this is the only figure that it came with as a licensed figure, Kevin from Ghostbusters 2016, aka the female Ghostbusters. I might actually repurpose some of the other parts because they're still really cool for a Ghostbusters outfit. I had no problem with those. And um, I don't have the full lineup, but I do have this one and the one that came from Dimensions, and that's okay for me. But yeah, these are still cool parts to use here and there. And I definitely like the face. I like the hair too. Again, I don't think I have the hair in that color, so that works out very nicely. Next up, I got ones for some projects that I've been working on or trying to get back to working on. So the first two I have here are Lego store employees. They're exactly the same, and one of them is just holding a katana for whatever reason. Um, and I don't remember exactly what Lego sets these came from, I don't recall having them myself as far as the torso goes, even though they use the face and hair for a lot of the LEGO store employees, but they're still good ones to have here. Unfortunately, they haven't made a retail set where they include ones with the yellow apron like the actual LEGO store employees wear, and the ones that they have made for that are from the manager's conference several years ago that are thousands of dollars, and I am not going to buy eight of them for the purposes that I need. I am trying to look for LEGO store employees that I can match up and have eight copies of them so that I can use them in the Lego store pop-up workshop that I built not too long ago. Uh, a year or two back, I built this Lego store that used to be in my state. It was for the holiday season in 2018, and I did have the privilege of working there during that season. But, unfortunately, uh, that thing has taken a big toll when it comes to travel and moving, uh, so I've had to rebuild a whole bunch of it, and I'm actually going to try to update some things on it so that it's a little more accurate, a little better scaled, and just a better pleasing look to it all the way around. But getting the staff for it would be really, really cool because I never filled the whole thing with LEGO Store staff. I just had one or two, you know, walking around there. So that'll be good. Uh, sometime later, I'll have to mention about that. Maybe I'll even do a video of like a before and after because I do have some photos of what it looked like beforehand. These two figures are actually for an upcoming collab I've been trying to work on since Brick Fair, Virginia. Um, and these are, it's a pirate themed collab. I'm just gonna go with that. But uh, I thought there would be some cool figures to add in with it. Cause I'd already have a bunch of older pirate figures, but some of the newer stuff like from Pirates and Castle can also work very well for just some unique torsos and some other neat outfits. So this one on the left is actually from one of the Pirates themes in 2014-15 or something like that. It was the last uh, the last recent one that they had, but it was still many years back. And it was a really nice theme. I only have like three of the sets from it, but they were still really cool. This is the Admiral's Dollar that is from the theme. And I really do like how the legs work with the torso, like printing-wise. They really do nicely wrap around it. And I also do like this figure, which is from the Mill Village Raid from Kingdoms, a.k.a. the set with the goat. <laughs> the, the beloved animal goat that everybody wants a new version of or more distribution of. Yep, that's the set he's from. But as a farm boy, you know, it doesn't fit for pirates. But I think the torso is just enough that it could work as like a, a duck hand for a pirate ship or something, 
you know, in the pirate realm. Something colonial could still work with that, even if I change a couple parts or just the context in which he's used. I'm going to also swap parts with him, and like just like the other figures that I mentioned earlier. Now we move on to some interesting things, because these are things I didn't expect to find in the store, but I'm happy that I did. And there were some things that I've been looking for for quite some time beyond the normal stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't have a Lego goat, unfortunately. Um, but I'm okay with that for, you know, I don't need it for anything for a long time. So I'll be okay with that. But thank you, Stud Studios. Welcome to the stream. Um, so these things that I found in the store... We're, we're in that realm of, okay, I didn't expect to find that, but it's still really cool that there that I did. Um, I do try to look through the Bizarre Lego stuff first and foremost throughout the store. There was one or two things I actually went into the store for that were kind of towards that, but it didn't... Uh, I think it already sold, unfortunately. I didn't pick it up the last time that I was there. So I uh, found a couple other things that weren't there the last time. And one of them was actually a set with some of these figures, which I don't need the whole set. I only need, like, even a not even all the figures with it. So I picked up the Duplo versions of Winnie the Pooh and Tigger because I had always wanted those. I remember reading them in the catalogs even long after I was playing with Duplo just because it was a cool idea that the fact that they made Lego Winnie the Pooh was really neat to me. And nowadays, well, we have the Lego Ideas Winnie the Pooh, so we have it as a minifigure, right? <laughs> yeah, I picked up that one too. That, was, that happened to be in the store as well. They didn't have a a Tigger at the time that I went, unfortunately. I don't plan on getting the whole 100 Acre Woods set because I'm just not that interested to get the whole thing for display or whatever. I don't even want all the figures necessarily with it. Getting Poo and Tigger are probably the main things I would go for. Um, so I have Poo. I just have to look out for Tigger. Similarly, I feel the same way with the ABC 123 Sesame Street set. Um, where I definitely want to get a Big Bird minifigure because I already had a Big Bird minifigure sculpture that I made long before that was a Lego Ideas project. And um, it would be nice to add on with that. But for now, these are cool to compare with each other, to have a minifigure and Duplo version of Winnie the Pooh. Very cool that they had actually even crossed um, different themes with that. You know, normally a system figure wouldn't be in Duplo just by chance. So it's nice to have uh, ones that do. And then last but not least, a figure that I've been looking for for almost 10 years. I actually can't believe it myself. Almost 10 years. I've, I remember exactly what year that this series of collectible minifigures came out. But it feels like it's been almost 10 years. It's definitely felt long enough. <laughs> Insert Robin Williams quote from, uh, from Jumanji. What year is it? <laughs> Give me Burks. Welcome to the stream. Um... And this is probably my most wanted collectible minifigure of all time after Lady Liberty. And I'm I'm glad that I got her many years ago from Bricklink. Um, I did actually get her back in the day when she was a magnet in the Lego store in Rockefeller Center. But as a magnet, it was a glued figure. You could not take the entire thing apart in order to use it on its own. Well... <laughs> So I'm glad that I did eventually get the Lady of Liberty figure on its own. And it's definitely one of my favorite minifigures of all time. I got to do a separate list or something about that. But this one, I not only found one of it, I found two of it. And one of them at a lower value than the other. I mean, with the Lego Store employees right here, it was basically this one was a, was a number difference because he didn't have the hair piece at first. And when I brought it to the register, they're like, oh, he should have a hair with him. Uh, you can go ahead and find one, you know no extra charge or whatever, even though it's all store credit, it was good to know. But this one, it's like, okay, um, it looks close enough. I don't mind it. I could always swap it around if need be, but I'm glad that I at least have one of the figure with the real deal, with all the parts necessary. The hazmat suit guy from Collectible Minifigures Series 4. Back in the day, I want to say for the first nine Collectible Minifigure Series, because Series 10 was the one where I actually started getting every single figure. And then Series 9, I went back to collect all the figures too. Because it was still available in stores. Series 4 was one of the series in which I was just getting whatever I liked. I didn't get all of them to get all of them. Um, and this was also back in, I want to say, mid-high school. So, you know, disposable income then. That, uh, <laughs> you know, get a couple packs at a time. But still try to get the ones that I really wanted. I remember Series 1, I wanted to get the zombie, 
I felt around the parts. I'm like, okay, there's no headpiece. But I did not find a shovel or a chicken piece. And instead, I got the Super Wrestler. So I'm like, okay, he's not bad. He's just not what I wanted, but I'm okay with it. And meanwhile, this one, it's a very particular headpiece to it. You know, that's a very particular piece to find. And despite my best efforts back then, I could not find this figure in the blind packs before picking them up on from Five Below. Because that's the only place I knew to find them back then. It was uh, Five Below. And um, multiple times, I got the Werewolf and Mad Scientist figure. I had three of each of them after feeling the packs of Series 4. And then, yeah, one of each of them was okay. I didn't mind that. And I still like those figures. And they weren't exactly what I was looking for. They weren't, but they weren't bad either. But having three of each of them, no thank you. I didn't even have anyone to trade it with at the time. So I was kind of stuck with those figures, not knowing what to do with three of each of them. So it actually got me off of Collective Minku collectible minifigures for the next two series so five and six i completely skipped over did not pick up anything from those while they were on the store shelves because i was so frustrated in trying to find this one and here's the second one that has a different face to him it's a much, like a much more scared face a more standard scare face that you've seen for over 10 years i think i definitely see this like 2007 8 or something um but still all the right parts. I do remember one time at the Lego min at the Lego store, the build a minifigure section, after this series discontinued, I found the pants for this figure, and I'm like, well, I know series, uh, I know CMF uh, figures turn up in there, and different parts of them, and sometimes you could get almost an entire figure built. Not always, but sometimes. I got one that was entirely built. It was the, the Tribal Chief from Series 2, maybe 3. Um... But this one, I only found the pants. I was like, oh, I want the rest of it. So anyways, it's really, really, uh, is cathartic the right word? Feels like the right word. It's really uh, relieving of me that I can finally have this figure and have two of them that I could use in all different purposes. Especially now it's Halloween. Feels like a good time to use them for all different kinds of spooks and unusual creatures and things like that. I still have to work on a Halloween display. I, I have a lot of my stuff in storage, but I've been dealing out a couple things here and there, um, and as well as building some new things just to decorate the house, not to bring the conventions or whatever. Um, but yeah, Series 5 and 6, I actually genuinely get confused what figures go into them, because, e like, even to this day, <laughs> like, I, I paid so little attention to them that I'm like, I don't even remember if Lady Liberty is 5 or 6, and I know all the other ones pretty well. I know I said before about the one figure that was either two or three. Yeah, there's still a few here and there I kind of get confused about, especially for the numerical series. But there's still enough that I'm like, I I don't know. I have a good memory for that stuff. Um, what I have for breakfast this morning, I have no idea. <laughs> so this is really cool of picking up these figures, especially... Um, and having a lot of other figures for all different projects and purposes down the road. Um, things that I'm working on in the background. I know it's a haul video. I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning. I know it's a haul video. Where's the other content? Where's the other good stuff that I usually make? Well, the usual stuff takes a lot more time. I'm trying to work with an editor in order to make it look better. But also, if there's a good turnaround to it, you know, come out much more frequently. I did a community post a while ago where I said, I have a lot of ideas of stuff to do. I've always had a big list of video projects, and it's just a lot of time balancing between other things to get that going. So, with that being said, still have something to share. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. Uh, hold on. I wanted to... Sometimes I... Know... It's sometimes like now I curse myself for not fully sorting parts. Yeah, I feel that. I'm still trying to sort Lego pieces, like different bins of things. There's actually some bins that fell over, and I have to resort them because all the pieces fell out. It's not great. But at least now, picking up figures, it's easy to work with, as opposed to getting like bulk pieces or something, because I know that takes a lot more uh, to inventory everything. I'm also doing a lot of cleanup around the house. So yeah, I know this isn't the Lego room, but we'll be back in the Lego room when the Lego room is ready to be back in. And, um, and other areas of the house also getting some, 
I, I want to say work to them, but it's really just organizing them. It's not like there's there's furniture or you know construction or anything. It's just more of oh, I just wanted to make it look neater. I just wanted to shape things up a bit better. Um, so at least I have this to share. I think that's fine. It's harmless, you know. I know some people they're like, oh, another haul video. But I also know people like haul videos, so I'm I'm okay sharing about this. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you all later. And have yourselves a wonderful Halloween if I don't see you anytime sooner.